The game still wants me to use the wormhole to attempt alien contact, but all the aliens are literally in our lab, and one of them is in her uterus, so... Ain't nothing classier than a pregnant lady sleeping on the floor of a diner. It wouldn't be a bad thing. Oh, bub, you've peed yourself. It's fine. You're having a baby. Worse is ahead. Hello from the void, it's Rose, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm coming to you from sweltering hot London where I have the privilege of packing up my house for my move next weekend. That might mean there's a bit of a delay on the next episode, I just don't know how it's all going to pan out, but hopefully not too bad. Uh, last time I got completely snookered by Floor, getting abducted by aliens and impregnated, so today we'll be meeting her alien child. Yay! Um, I have decided to keep the baby I think. Um, and hopefully also, if we get far enough ahead, we will be aging our little twin rose generation heirs up to teenagers so that I can announce the winner of the air poll, which is now closed, um, so I know who the winner is, but I didn't when I was recording this, so if there's any confusion there, that's where it's coming from. But yeah, let's see how it goes. Cute little frats. Okay, that's so many hugs. I'm gonna start out with my realisation that I've been a total div and the twins could be each other's BFF, therefore completing their aspirational goals, so let's do that. Aww. So they now have both completed the second milestone, popular kid. I don't know how possible this is going to be because I don't know if friends with two adults includes their own parents, I'm going to guess no. And they've only got three days left so I'm going to let them go about their own business now. Floor. What are you doing? Face mask and a boogie. Well that's cute. However we do have logic and mischief skills that need maxing. We especially need to work on doing some voodoo. I would quite like to make my doll tether to whoever it was that got me pregnant, but I don't know how practical that is because I don't know who it is. Um, so I'm thinking Jacob, just to, um, you know, get him back for coming in our house and kissing us. Um, but in order to tether it to him, I think I do have to be with him. And I'm not going to invite him over because who knows what he might do. Oh, Carmine's changed her hair colour, which I don't love. These guys are like now kind of joined at the hip, which is very cute. There's no monster. It'll be interesting if Crimson wins the air vote just because he's so baby. Like he's very sweet and innocent at the moment and it's kind of hard to see how he would transition into being sort of a hardened serial romantic, but we can make it work. I'm kind of ready to know which one of them it's going to be now. I'm recording this bit ahead of time, so the poll will be closed by the time this posts, but isn't yet. Everyone's done their homework. Things are in pretty good shape, actually. And that doesn't last long in this household, so we're just going to capitalise on that, get everyone in bed, and move on with our lives. Tomorrow will be the twins' like last day at primary school, because they age up to teenagers on Sunday. Exciting times. And we can now sell the gnomes. I'm kind of trying to save a bit of money so that I can move Curtis out once he's in like a solid relationship because I feel like living with your ex and her alien spawn is like not an ideal situation for him. I feel like he's a good guy so he would probably want to be there for Floor to a degree but I think with the separation we do need to be a bit careful. Previously she definitely let him do the bulk of the work which obviously would not be super appropriate in this instance. So I think once the twins have aged up to teens, I will move him out so that he can have his own life properly, but still obviously be part of their lives. They'll be old enough to understand, but also that might provide quite a good like trigger for why whoever wins the poll starts to um, act out a bit and maybe um, particularly in regards to romance. So that's kind of the story I'm going to be pursuing. Just getting Floor to do a little bit of chess before work with whoever is available, which in this instance is Crimson. Um, I don't love how with this alien pregnancy it never translates to a proper pregnancy moodlet so I have no idea when the baby's actually going to come but I'm guessing like Saturday night-ish. I have installed a reshade in my game so everything looks a little bit brighter um, and I just love how this room looks. I'm really proud of this build although it's not the easiest to film in because there's a lot of like things that don't disappear like structural things so it's kind of hard to get good angles but it's just a pretty house. We did get promoted last time we were at work, so we'll be like right at the bottom of the barrel in terms of promotability. Um, but we're on level 9, so we've only got one more level to achieve. So I don't mind letting her slack off a little bit more at work and maybe try and focus on getting some of those skills up and um, sorting out stuff like tethering her voodoo doll to Jacob. I also removed the black eye makeup from my game, so it can no longer just be randomly added to my career outfit. I actually really like this hair on her. Yeah, you'd have to be pretty dumb not to um, know what was happening, Floor. Ooh. 
good robot. Okay, hello, random alien. There's a lot of aliens on site today. Wonder if any of them are the ones that impregnated me. Um, speaking of weird and inappropriate things, uh, Jacob, where are you? I would like to please bind my voodoo doll to you so I can prevent you from hitting on me or at least slap you every time you do because we want to be just friends. Good friend Jacob. Please and thank you. Yes, we have successfully bound this doll to Jacob. So both the kids are going to get a B for their great school life. This lab is disgusting. There's just crap everywhere. Which, given how much time we spend mind controlling people to clean, is either a damning indictment of their level of cleanliness or Floor's mind control ability. Hopefully, the latter. The game still wants me to use the wormhole to attempt alien contact, but all the aliens are literally in our lab, and one of them is in her uterus. So, no, you may not smell my hair, you may not touch my hair, you may not look at my hair. What is wrong? Everyone in this lab is furious today. The aliens are mad, Dara is mad, Lucas, who is normally like a puppy, is pretty mad. But by some sort of force of nature, Gianna, who is constantly mad, completely fine. Totally fine. We made a ton of money, we got a ton of vacation time. I might get her to take a vacation day and work on her logic, because that's definitely what we're the feathers behind in. Let's start out our evening by sharing a conspiracy theory with our child. Then let's get out of our black supervillain outfit and into something a little bit more comfortable and then we will, we're going to go out for dinner tonight as a family, just to a diner somewhere and I'm sorry, I'm obsessed with this neighbourhood, look at that background, she's just telling her children lies about aliens in front of like mysterious aircrafts and a beautiful desert sunset, like take me there now, I don't want to be in England anymore. We're going to try and get ourselves a table. Are they going to see us outside and there's no lighting? I mean, not ideal, but I guess at least it's COVID safe. Nobody's in the best mood ever. Curtis is pretty stinky. Uh, the twins are quite tired. Floor always needs a wee because of the baby. Um, I mean, not that we know it's a baby yet, but yeah, the baby. Um, however, with the twins aging up on Sunday, with the new baby coming, I, as I said, going to move Curtis out. So I just want to make them have this like nice little outing together and also just you know, make the most of some of the features of the game I don't use very often, like eating out. Trying to get everyone to sit at the table though, not easy. Kids are trying to do their homework, now there's burgers on the homework. Is the burger replacement? I don't know. Is someone going to pass out? Probably. Ever classy. This is about to happen. Ain't nothing classier than a pregnant lady sleeping on the floor of a diner. Should probably send them home before Floor ruins the twins' political careers before they even begin. Right, none of them ate their food. Well, they had a fe successful festival, if not a good meal. Floor, where are you going to eat this? Oh, your kid's desk. Of course. Yeah, Crimson got left at the restaurant. Not really sure how. You see why I didn't want her to have another kid? Curtis appears to be praying to the fridge gods. Ah, Gouda, who art in heaven, please let me move out of this house. I got everyone in bed for about mm, four seconds, or like a few in-game hours, and then Floor has got up. She is heavily dissociating around her pregnancy. It's now changed the moodlet, but... um. Yeah, still no baby. And she's just going to get up in the dead of night and grill some bananas. Looks like Curtis has also been doing some night grilling. So, you know, all functional here. Everyone, everyone is fine. Eating plantains in the dark. Her bazongas have become enormous, which I know happens with pregnancy. But is she having three aliens and there's one in each tip? Because it wasn't this much last time round. And that time it was twins. And if it's twins again, I will scream. I will scream into this microphone and you will all have to suffer with me. Having a very relaxed Saturday morning, everything is broken, everything is breaking, and everyone's kind of up at about 11.30, which to be fair, bang on for a Saturday for me. Okay, the sound effect on angry poop is really quite something. I was confused, I thought there was a fire on the lot, but no. Just remembered quite late in the game that there are those um, like values the kids are meant to work towards, so you're gonna go and check how they're doing on those. He has terrible conflict resolution and um, he's not very responsible. She is not very emotionally. Yeah, I mean, they're, as I said, not getting the best parenting. 
It's a bit late in the day to make massive changes to that, but I suppose we could help Crimson out by stopping him actually dying of rage before he even becomes a teen. It would solve the air question, but then all your voting would have been in vain. Who's at the door? It's Tina again. She's always here. Maybe she's something to do with the pregnancy. Keeping an eye on us. Oh, she fabricated something for our child. NPCs often seem to like Carmine a lot, which is interesting because Crimson is definitely more gregarious, but it will help out if she wins the air poll, so. It's an electronic upgrade part. Wow, thanks. Despite the fact that Crimson is in a shoddy mood, I figured the twins could use their last day of childhood to have some friends over, but of course they've all aged up to teen except for Daisy, so it's just going to be her. I love that Flora's literally standing there and she's just like knocked around her. She's like, I don't really want to talk to you. You seem a bit out of control. This kid is so angry that he's been swimming laps, he's done a poop, he's had a cold shower and he's still angry and he wants to go punch a bear, so I'm just going to let him. Carmine, on the other hand, is just getting to know Daisy. She's kind of catching up to Crimson's relationship with her, which is useful as she is going to be the first victim of their generation. I mean, that's a spoiler, but I mean, obvious, right? Like, is this alien child ever going to burst forth? Floor, would you come and repair this because your child is just... He's just having a lot of emotions. Curtis has come home. Let's invite over Ayaka. The kids are playing dolls upstairs and Dara from the office wants to come over, which seems like a good opportunity to level up our mischief. I mean, this alien has got to come out soon or she's going to literally burst like alien. Meanwhile, outside, Curtis is inching towards his freedom. Ayaka is definitely trying to like get to know the kids a bit. She's like, I'm dating your dad. And he's like, Rah! kind of sums the twins up in a nutshell. Carmine's like, oh, great, on the surface, but underneath is probably plotting her fall. And Crimson's just screaming in her face. Gotta love them both. Yes, that's a normal way to have a conversation. Carmine is feeling both confident and emotionally drained, which I can relate to. And speaking of complicated emotions, here comes the alien fetus. We have gone into labour. I'm actually going to send Floor to the hospital, which I never normally do, very simply because she's never officially known she's pregnant. There's a lot of unknowns here, so having some medical attention wouldn't be a bad thing. Oh, bub, you've peed yourself. It's fine. You're having a baby. Worse is ahead. We have arrived at the hospital and... Floor, I assume, knows what she's doing, because I certainly don't. I've literally never done this before. Even if she doesn't know what's happening with the baby, she does know how to walk through walls. Okay, we've got a medical assistant delivering the baby. Fine by me. Better than Curtis, which is what happened last time. Why are there lasers involved though? That just feels unnecessary. It's a girl. I guess I should have thought of a name for it. Um, Red Things. Let's call her Cerise. Better just be one. If I'm having an alien baby, I'm not having two. The father is Senior Pollination Technician 3. Well, it appears to have an exoskeleton. That's a thing. Oh god, it's got the voice. That cannot stand. You all know how I feel about the echoing alien thing, and I cannot have that in my household, so if there is no way to turn that off, it's going to have to go. Sorry, Cerise. Hopefully, there is a way to save you. I'm going to go Google it now. So basically, as soon as Cerise is a toddler, it looks like I can make her wear her human disguise and get rid of the alien voice, so I will 100% be aging her up straight away. Also, to get rid of this slightly terrifying alien bassinet that seems to have manifested on the landing of all places. Part of me feels a little bit bad, being like, oh yes, as soon as she's old enough, she must subjugate her alien persona in order to make me more comfortable, but it's my game and I cannot deal with the echo voices. If, it, if she didn't have that, I would be completely fine with her being green, having tentacles, whatever, but it's so jarring. To be very clear, I'm mad with the EA developers who made that choice, not with the aliens themselves. If you're up there, I'm a mate. I did consider sending Cerise back to her homeworld, but I feel like Floor having had the baby would be like, as a scientist and a materialist, like, it's mine. It's my special and unique thing. You will not take it away from me. Not really thinking through the fact that she's going to have to raise her. Anyway, here is our first look at little Cerise, who is very, very green. She's actually super cute, despite her aggressive nose mask. 
oh wow, her humour disguise is, um, she looks like an 80 year old woman. So given that Cerise was born bright green and Flor is a mint sim, but neither Crimson or Carmine inherited either the green hair or the green eyes, um, and obviously Curtis is not biologically related to Cerise, um, I decided that I would go ahead and give her Flor's colouring in the human disguise because then, you know, hopefully there'll be some mint carrying on down our family tree. Um, and with her alien look, I just knocked the colour back a little bit. Um, and gave her the same hair colour from one to the other but I'm not planning on having her in that almost at all. Neither of them look super confident that this is a great idea but hey, we're gonna run with it. Unconcerned by the alien birth upstairs, Curtis is once again up at 4.30 watching some TV which feels on brand for his last day in the house. You can tell how little I planned to have a third kid because there was no space so I had to chop the end off Crimson's room to make space for Cerise and now I'm having Floor talk herself down because if she dies of humiliation this close to achieving her generational goals I will be furious. I would have gone through all of this for nothing. <laughs> Cerise's first instinct is to go play in the toilet so I guess that's who she is. And it is the twins birthday today. So we're literally just going to get to the point that they can kind of take care of themselves and we're going to have to we're going to have to start all over again with the unwanted alien toddler but we did choose to keep her so we're not going to refer to her as unwanted because in some sense we wanted her curtis appears to be sick or something he's just tragically swinging it's been a while since we had any fruit salad in the house so i figured it was time Somehow Carmine is educating her dad on fish, which seems improbable because she knows nothing about fish. Kids are pretty bored. I guess nobody told them they had an alien sibling upstairs they could go play with. Just fruit salad. <laughs> Only fruit salad. And the sweet scent of fruit salad. Um, Dean Gilmore has apparently passed away. He's a friend of Curtis's, so he's sad swinging again. I feel like this game is realistic in as much as like Curtis and Floor never get any sleep. Carmine's also gone to bed, like this family are on a terrible body clock. Floor, time to get up and I would like you to cook a strawberry cake. Great, we've broken the fridge, please don't anyone get electrocuted. We are just trying to keep everyone alive, awake and in a fairly good mood and their everyday outfits long enough to get the cake baked, put some candles on it and age these twinsies up to teenagers because then at the beginning of the next episode I can reveal who won the air poll and we can start like properly thinking about the rose generation whilst also finishing off Flautles' goals. You could grab Cerise and bring her down so she can be part of the family for this. Carmine is going to go first, we want everyone in the room, even little Cerise who doesn't know what's going on in her little Kermit the Frog onesie. We did invite over Daisy and also Savannah and Malia and all of the other kiddos who aged up to teen to be here for our birthday, but they've all gone somewhere else, probably around the pool. And here she blows. Teenage gym, romantic travails, sweaty gym shorts and hormonal upheavals. Best buckle those boots, the ride starts here. I'm gonna give them both the romantic trait at this stage and the serial romantic aspiration. Um, Oh, that is, that's a look. That's clothes that you are wearing and eyebrows that you have got on. We will sort you right out. But first, would you quickly pop some fresh candles on that cake so that Crimson can have his go? And it's Crimson's go. Carmine, take your terrifying eyebrows away so that this kiddo can have his turn. Whichever one of them is not the heir, I will probably take away one of the traits and give them a different aspiration and a different third trait. And I just quickly aged up Daisy May too. And then I'm going to go into Cass and fix all of these terrifying, terrifying little faces. There we have it. The Rose Generation are officially teenagers, which means we can start pursuing their romantic interests. I'm going to show you their makeovers and announce you on the air poll at the beginning of the next video, just because this one got a bit out of time. Um, and then also we will be moving Curtis out, as I've said, we're going to be grinding away at Floor Skill and raising Cerise the Alien Spawn. Um, I'm thinking Floor's generation will probably actually be over in a couple of episodes time, which is going to be a shame. I've really enjoyed playing her, but I'm kind of ready for a new flavour of Chaos. Hopefully you are too. 
It's meant a lot that I've had some comments in the last couple of weeks, so thank you very much to everyone who has taken the time to watch, to leave me a little comment, to give me a little thumbs up. If you want to do that down there, I'd love to see it, and I'll see you next time. Bye!